Hello again, this is James Nussbaumer, and thank you again for listening to my audio version of The Master of Everything, a story of mankind and the world of illusion we call life. In this session, we begin with chapter four. The title is Looking Beyond by Letting Go as You See Through the Window. The thoughts I would consistently have of two of me or two masters or the good and bad sides of me, I would come to realize were what forced me to choose between my body and the real me. Or we can say reality, the true reality. There is no doubt about the light that touches me, all of us, and I know that I, I, and I, and I now know that my body goes along with me for the ride, at least for a while yet. Thanks to the window in the previous chapter, and later what I would learn from A Course in Miracles, I'm able to see that I'm drawn to the abundant light and realize it has always been with me. Now my will is to extend it. I'm able to perceive and acknowledge that I have everything I need within me. I'm realizing that I must usually perceive before knowing. My mind projects my bodily image and my guilt and fear make it seem real, but it's not. For the time being, guilt and fear remain with this world as separate illusions. When I say for the time being, it's because time is all that we see. All of our physical perceptions are based on time, but we can progressively subdue time, the realm where our thinking side identifies with a body and its boundaries, who and what we think we are. We can learn this is the unreal or unnatural self we have made. This is all that Jesus wanted us to understand when he said, forgive them for they know not what they do. We don't know our real self, and to forgive will allow us to let go and surrender so what we did make of ourselves can be undone. I found that when I am afraid of something, I am acknowledging its power to hurt me. We all believe in what we value. If I am fearful, then I must be placing value in fear. Therefore, I must be valuing wrongly. This fearful habit of mind is destroying our chances for peace, and we must have peace within us before we can extend it. Recognizing this, we can more clearly understand the Bible where it says, the peace of God passes understanding. The statement means that peace cannot be valued wrongly, nor can it be shaken at all by errors of any kind. When we no longer feel vulnerable to attack, separated or rejected, we can then lengthen the instance of pure thought or no thinking, where we reinterpret for our mind what it is we truly want. The bottom line is that we all want peace, but are in fear of how to achieve it. Even the murderer wants peace, but he also, but he, excuse me, but his own fears are so deeply rooted and his self, his real self, so shallow that he cannot begin to see forgiveness in the world he is a part of. Forgiveness means to overlook or let go and then look beyond the heirs to the realm where the will of God exists. In other words, when you have overlooked someone's heirs by looking beyond their body that made the heir, then you have forgiven them. This is also how you must forgive yourself. You can start forgiving yourself right now as you read this book by acknowledging the belief you truly value and want to live by without guilt and fear. In other words, begin right now to start looking beyond your guilt and fears by overlooking them. The initial step is to reinterpret how your mind sees the world, which you have made by following a pattern that others have set for you. Then you can turn around these habits of mind by living your own free will, which requires forgiveness, or looking beyond the world's workings and the you that you made. Looking beyond it all and find out what you see, your vision, if you will. Without forgiveness, you will remain in the dark, guilty and fearful, and will naturally see death. But the light, with a capital L, 
but the light that is within you has a willingness to extend itself. This is the realm where there is no death. You may be asking, how then can I escape darkness and enter the real world? It's simple, by letting go of all that chains you in that all that chains you and binds you or shackles you in using your real vision to look through the window. What is real vision, you might ask? My goal is to help you find out. Now we go into chapter five, titled A Meaningless World. It seems that each generation looks back to previous generations to learn from their mistakes as well as their successes in order to improve their progress into the future. These passed along lessons serve in all generations that follow as the rationale for making a better world, except that we're unaware of what we see. We've all heard it before that the problem with history is it keeps repeating itself. Or should we say that we keep repeating ourselves and are afraid of true change? This is the reason we don't understand what we see, which leads us to get upset and fear something that really isn't there. A dictator fears that a group of non-Christians are a threat to the power he strives to achieve, for example. In turn, he makes decisions to eliminate to eliminate them from the face of the earth, resulting in massive numbers of Jewish people being exterminated. Nations continue to engineer the most sophisticated killing devices. And with a tap on a keyboard, we can eliminate or annihilate much of the earth's population. Additionally, the United States of America which prides itself as the land of the free and is supposedly the most sophisticated and civil country in the world, executes its own natural born citizens. Rather than, fo I'm sorry, rather than focusing resources more on methods of rehabilitation, especially for crimes resulting from, pro from problems of addictions or poverty or mental illness, we spend millions of dollars to put individuals to death in the name of creating a better world. Would this be the home of the brave? No, this is the home of the fearful. Is this insane or what? This book is not intended to be political at all, nor is it intended to pick on or label groups of people, but it is intended to send you a message about your own fears of change. This is what will make a better world. It's hard to teach an old dog new tricks, and similarly, our old ideas about time are difficult to change. Everything most of us believe is rooted in our concept of time and the mind habits that make us miserable and lead us to err depend on our unwillingness to learn new ideas about it. This is precisely why we need new ideas about time. The first time-related idea I'll discuss about seeing the past is not really as strange as it may sound. What if before making a judgment about everything we might look at, we acknowledge to ourselves that the only thing we are seeing is the past? Okay, please bear with me as I'll explain. Let's consider when we sip on a cup of morning coffee. Do we actually see a coffee cup? Or are you merely looking at your past experiences of picking up a cup, inhaling its aroma, anticipating the jolt of caffeine, and taking a drink from it? Out of your past, you are remembering the feeling of the rim of the cup against your lips while having breakfast. How else could you have known whether or not the coffee is hot and that the cup can break if you drop it? What do you really know about the cup except what you have learned from the past? Your past learning has taught you the idea of this cup. Our minds are always preoccupied with past thoughts and impressions. And this, of course, is why we see only the past. No one sees anything, really. We are all seeing our past images projected onto the movie screen of our lives. 
Our preoccupation with the past is the cause of the misconception about time in which our seeing suffers. The mind seems to not want to grasp the present, which is really the only time there is. The present does not tick forward, and each present moment is always only that one moment, and then it is gone. A new moment rushes right in. Each moment of each day is always a brand new moment, unrelated to any past or future moments. As you listen or read this book now, that moment is gone, and you are in a new moment, and so on. This is why your moments cannot understand time and cannot, in fact, understand anything. And thus, we perceive messages of a meaningless world, which upsets us. A present moment is not your past nor your future, but it is where you live. One thought we can be sure of about the past or the future is that it is not here. To think about it at all is to think about illusions. An illusion is something, but rather nothing, something that is not here. Very few have realized what is actually entailed in picturing the past or in anticipating the future. Let's be sure not to confuse the mind with the brain. The brain is your body. Your mind is of you, but it is not you not the true self. The mind is actually blank when it does its picturing or imaging of the past and future. This is so because when your mind thinks it is acting separately and on its own and anything it thinks about is an illusion or nothing, which really is no thing. It can be said that these illusory ideas that preoccupy our mind are blocking out truth. The only constructive idea we can have at this point is to recognize that our mind has been merely blank rather than believing it is filled with ideas. This acknowledgement is the first step in using your real vision, thus giving you a glimpse of spirit or who you are. It is not necessary to understand at this point that you can see nothing as it is now, but it's a huge step toward undoing your false ideas to be honest with yourself and to acknowledge the fact that you do not understand. In the beginning, it may, may be difficult for you to believe that what your mind seems to picture is really not there. This idea can be quite disturbing and may meet active resistance in many forms which we'll be discussing all the way through this book. But once again, acknowledging any type of disbelief or discomfort with this idea is a great starting point. Why is that, you may ask? Because you are actually holding a vision of truth. This may be your first experience of real vision. You see, that truth that you really don't understand is the beginning of your vision. A good question to ask yourself is, how many meaningless thoughts do you have that show you a meaningless world? It seems our perception of the world is determined by the world. But please do not confuse perception with knowledge. We will be discussing the difference later on. Have you ever tried to use only your present moment thoughts to determine the world you live in? Each new moment then becomes a new world or a new birth. This type of vision will take some practice, but also can become automatic in a new way to live in this world. It is your release from the world you learned from and is the key to where forgiveness lies. Could you dare to consider living each moment of each day automatically overlooking errors? How about automatically looking beyond the heirs to where God's will exists, which is your true free will? You would always be living a life of automatic forgiveness. Forgiveness would be your life. Being taken advantage of just would not exist any longer because you would always be looking beyond the heirs of this world and would be at one with God's will. You could say this condition would have you being. God's will. Now, at this present moment, can you see who you truly are? Now we enter chapter six. 
and the title here is called We Are His Extended Thought. How can you actually go about forgiving? You might be asking that question as you've been listening to me. When you are upset for whatever reason, even with, say, a meaningless world, it is necessary to correct a major perceptual distortion most of us have. You believe that what upsets you is a frightening world, or a sad world, or a violent and insane world. But if you are being honest with yourself, you can acknowledge that these attributes were given to the world by you, caused by how you think of the world. The thought of a meaningless world engenders fear, but meaninglessness is impossible because nothing can exist without meaning. This would be an illusion. If you believe the world is meaningless, then your fears of the world do not exist either and are another illusion brought on by illusion. Now we're seeing insanity. It may seem that you would not perceive something that has no meaning. On the contrary, you will be particularly likely to think you do perceive it. Why? Because it reinforces your belief that your own illusions of the past are real. But remember, you assign meaning to the past to fill a void, a blank area in your mind. Your own thinking body believes it is lacking and feels empty, so it works diligently to make its own ideas of the truth. This thinking is separate from God, but therefore you have also observed his extension to you, which is the real you. Yes, each one of us is his extended thought. As you recognize the meaningless and the false as being merely what they are, your confused and empty body becomes doubtful, fearful, and guilty because it senses a separation from its source. Anything that separates from its source naturally experiences panic. When our loved one suddenly dies or leaves us, we experience loss and pain and fear due to the separation. For now, there is no reason for your confused self to try to understand everything that I'm writing about at this time or that I'm speaking of at this time to you. But there is a reason to let go and make room for what you do understand. That's the whole point of this so far. Look at it this way. The sun known as the source of the center of the physical solar system, extends itself with its rays, though it can often be obscured by cloud cover, depending where you are positioned here on Earth. Nevertheless, the sun remains forever as its rays continue to extend, and the clouds eventually dissipate without affecting the sun or its rays. Just as the rays of the sun extend, regardless of cloud cover, so are you the extended thought of God, regardless of the clouded thinking your mind dreams up. To recognize reality or to know the light is to be enlightened. Jesus, one of many enlightened individuals to ever walk the earth, and the one whom much of humanity has been drawn to, was aware of the dreaming mind. As a man, he had the knowledge from within and was aware of the extended thought of God as who we all are. His many messages told us simply to uncover our eyes and see the light that is already there. There's no reason to wait for some future event. It's with us now. He also expressed this message more deeply, essentially saying, you believe you are a body. However, you can choose between loveless or miraculous channels of expression. You can make of yourself an empty shell, but it can only express nothing. You can destroy your body, your medium of communication, but not your potential. You did not create yourself. Thank you for listening so far. And we will continue in the next session in part two, searching the hand of destiny in the next video.